My name is John Sasaki. I'm a Toronto-based artist, uh, although I do have some family roots in Richmond, in the Richmond area, and uh, which is very much what this exhibition um, explores. Um, as an artist, I work in a lot of different media. Um, so this is, uh, this is performance that you'll be seeing in this exhibition. Um, I also work in video, I work in sculpture, photography, uh, painting. Um, in this exhibition, you'll see documentation and remnants of a uh, performance that happened back in July um, as uh, part of the Richmond Maritime Festival and uh, also as a component of the live 2019 biennial. Um, and uh, it depicts a, a performance of me standing waist deep in water, um, trying to build a boat um, out of just like very provisional tools and materials and little or no knowledge of how to do that. So it's obviously a lot more difficult to build a boat when you're standing waist deep in water than it is uh, in a nice dry workshop. So uh, I was interested in like the extra challenges, the technical challenges that come with doing that. Um, I was also interested in the, the sort of comic absurdity of that. It's a little bit slapstick at times, you'll notice. Um, but uh, I was also interested in delving into that family history of uh, <clears throat> my grandfather's uh, sort of life on Sea Island, um, where he owned a fishing boat until 1942, when it was, uh, it was taken away and sold, and he was sent to an internment camp. Um, and uh, I'm very much interested in this, this sort of, um, all this maritime knowledge that my grandfather would have had that uh, didn't get passed down to my father or, or to myself. Um, so, you know, this is a guy that probably knew about um, boat maintenance and about, um, you know, marine engines and about, uh, you know, fixing, I don't know, fishing nets. Um, but of course, when he moved to Ontario, uh, he was forced to, like, give up that life because there's no commercial fishing in Ontario uh, that I'm aware of. And uh, he got a job. Um, first as a florist and then as a typesetter. So, you know, this, this, this sort of wealth of knowledge that I imagine he might have had, or he would have had to have, um, just sort of vanished in 1942. So when I'm standing there in the water trying to build a boat, um, it's, it's very much kind of a demonstration of all the, uh, all the stuff that I didn't uh, inherit, all like that, that sort of, you know, that, that, um, that knowledge that I didn't inherit. And, um, I'm, I'm sort of stumbling my way through trying to, trying to do something, but you know, like reinventing the wheel and trying, um, you know, from square one, to uh, to figure out what this life might have been like. And, um, and it's very cumbersome and it's uh, very inefficient. Um, and as I'm standing there, problems obviously arise. I'm trying to problem solve these things as I'm going, um, and. Uh, there is sort of this underlying theme of, um, of just sort of make do and adaptability, which, you know, when I think back on, on my grandfather, like this was, this was sort of like the one thing that he did pass down is like this, this idea of adaptability and being able to switch from a fisherman to a typesetter. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I kind of think of like, that's, that's one thing that, that's sort of a common thread that sort of ties uh, myself to, to the experience that he might have had. The performances um, are, they're, they're sort of an outline of the performance, like this is, this is point A and this is point Z and um, you know, something is going to happen in between to kind of get me from point A to point Z, but um, I hardly ever try and define like what all those steps are and in fact that's, that's very much what the performance is about is, is sort of figuring these things out, um, you know, very publicly and very ad hoc and um, you know, in the in the moment, like the uh, the fact of the matter is, like I'm I'm really bad at predicting all the things that could arise. So, um, I I kind of I keep it very loose, and then I I try to allow as much sort of latitude for um, you know other other things that I could never have sort of foreseen to to sort of impact the the outcome of the piece. So, um, yeah, when I'm uh, when I was preparing for this piece, I was kind of imagining like you know, maybe some audience members might heckle me or give advice or whatever, and and I, I 
it's sort of built into the piece that like there's there's all sorts of space for that to happen and and um, I think it would have it would have sort of moved the performance into a very different direction, but I would have been equally happy with that if you know if, even if some there were some kids swimming around, if some kid had like you know offered to help or something, it it would have been it would have been great, and it would have been like a very different piece. And I, I like um, just sort of leaving open like the the possibility for the piece to become something entirely different from what I had imagined it was. Um, yeah, there were some. I don't want to say happy accidents because they were actually very frustrating in the moment, but I, I had um, my Japanese boat building saw. Uh, it's a tool that I'd never used before. So this, uh, when you're watching the documentation, you're seeing me using it for the first time. Um, and it's, it's actually very, uh, I found it very awkward because you, I think you cut on the pulling stroke as opposed to the, the pushing stroke, like the saws that I'm accustomed to. And so you're seeing me like fumbling around with that uh, a lot. Um, I also had a backup saw in case like I, I wasn't able to uh, to sort of manage with that um, the traditional boat building saw and at one point I I lost not one but two of the saws in the water they kind of slipped off of uh, off of my um, off of the wood I was working on and um, kind of disappeared into the water for a short amount of time so I was uh, I was left with uh, the necessity of having to like finish cutting this wood without my without either of my saws. So again, it kind of, kind of comes back to this process of improvisation and, and trying to figure out in that moment, how do I cut some wood without a saw? And uh, luckily I had a Japanese chisel in my bag. So it's, you know, like, you know, like adapting and, and using things that maybe weren't intended for, uh, for the purpose that I ended up using them for, but um, it sort of worked in a provisional kind of way. But I'm, I'm interested in, in like these, these sort of moments of problem solving as well. My work is always uh, very research heavy, so it kind of begins with me delving into a history, the, maybe like the, the history of a site or a community, and um, trying to sort of tease out things that are you know, of interest to me that I can maybe sort of build a, a project around. This is actually like very recent research, like only in the last couple of years. Um, I guess in, it more or less began in 2011 for me when I made a trip to Japan. and. Um, saw sort of firsthand like the, the amazing rich culture that actually just was not passed down to me um, as a fourth generation Japanese Canadian kid growing up in Ontario. It was it was something that um, was just sort of not part of my my daily life actually. So um, yeah, it, it, it became um, sort of a journey of, tr of trying to figure out like all the the, the sort of the heritage that. Uh, that maybe had possibly been left behind when the family left uh, Vancouver and Richmond um, in 1942. So. My, my grandfather owned a fishing boat uh, on, on Sea Island. Uh, it was called the Ark, and it was a 32-foot gill netter fishing boat, and uh, it was sold off in 1942, but I still have the, the sort of the, the documentation of that sale to BC Packers. So. I'm, uh, you know, as I'm, I'm sort of like thinking through this history, I'm also looking to, to sort of uncover what, what was the fate of this, uh, this specific fishing boat. So, um, yeah, hoping to find it in one way or another. It's probably been broken down for scrap, but um, just to find out what happened to it. For me, the, the working on the project was, um, really interesting because it brought to the forefront uh, so many themes that are, um, that, that sort of recur in, in a lot of my work, not just this project, but, you know, ideas of, um, like, adaptation and make do and improvisation um, that I think um, make, make the process of art making really interesting for me, but they're, they're also things that um, are, are sort of relatable, I think, for everybody in, in sort of all facets. Um, just the idea to you know, that that we can, um, you know, we might not have exactly the right tools that we need, but maybe with a little bit of creative thinking, we can we can find a way to just make do with what we have and 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 possibly get to somewhere that we don't we we couldn't have even predicted getting to.